Welcome back to the Kairos YouTube channel. I am Joshua Pfeiffer here today with Thomas Peach. Tom, good to have you back. Really nice to be here. It's been a little while, so it's good to be back in, in the saddle. It has been. How's COVID been for you? Oh, yeah. You know, not too bad. And, um, yeah, could be better, but... Um, not saying you had COVID, but... Um, no, COVID no, 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 right. Time, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we were well situated. It seems that everyone's... Uh, uh, take on COVID differs according to how they're situated mm. in life and in, in personality and all sorts of things like that. But I came out of it all right. Good to well, hear. Well, not that I'm out of it. It's still with mm. us, but hopefully not for too much longer. Mm. So we're here with Tom today to remember another um, date on the church calendar. And this one is St. Michael and All Angels, which the mm. church commemorates on September the 29th. And so, Tom, there's lots we could talk about, um, and we'll, we'll get to some various aspects of St. Michael and All Angels. But first of all, why that date, do you know? Yeah, so it's actually, be, it's, a, it's a bit random, because there's no birth date for an angel, there's no mm -hmm. death date for an angel, as often these days are marked accordingly. This date comes from, for historical reasons, in the 5th century, a Roman basilica called, named after St. Michael, was dedicated on this day and it became a significant celebration and it sort of filtered out into the church. This is a great day to set aside for the angels. It's as good a date as any that they could find in a way. And so St. Michael and All Angels has been with us for a long time. Occasionally you hear the term Michael Mass, mm. um, which is the Mass for St. Michael's Day, like we have Christmas, that's for, for Christ, it's the day for St. Michael and All Angels. Michael Mass is famous and you hear about it sometimes because in Northern Europe, especially in UK that I know of, the school system or the university terms are named after um, things. And so there's a term beginning around about the 30th of September. They call the whole term, not term one, but Michaelmas. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, uh, that's one reason why you sometimes hear that term and why it's dated 29th, yeah. semi-random date from the fifth century. They were celebrating on the 30th, but they celebrated on the eve, as often was done, the dedication of a Roman basilica named after St. Michael. Mm. Now, this is not um, uh, commemorated often in our own circles, right? It's, um, not, it hasn't been a big part of uh, my church experience growing up. And so perhaps one way into um, talking more about the day would be to say, Let's make the case, you know, what, what, what is significant about mm. remembering St. Michael and, and all angels and, and how can this be an encouragement in our faith and a, and a witness to our faith? What's the sort of high point you should touch on? Some of the saints we talk about are ones that aren't always commemorated in public worship. Mm. But St. Michael and all angels is one that should be and, right. and ought to be and, and I think it's a key part of our faith. Um, I'll tell a story maybe to begin. There was a, there's a theologian, John Milbank, who said he got a phone call, he's Anglican, he got a phone call from his diocese who said, um, someone on the radio wants to talk about angels. We're trying to find a pastor who still believes in them. Um, do you believe in them? And, and he said, and, and he realized that, and I think they'd been shopping around. Yeah. And, and he, he, he said, when reflecting on this, I don't think anyone should be ordained who doesn't believe in angels. Mm. Yeah. And here you go, a large part of his diocese, pastors, priests, didn't believe in it. And so there's a preference for the seen in our world. Mm -hmm. And angels draw us into a deeper reality that is especially worth celebrating because it does conflict with a lot of modern assumptions about the world. That we believe in not just the seen, but the unseen. As we say in the Nicene Creed, mm -hmm. God created um, the world visible and invisible, mm. seen and unseen. And around us there are angels that we forget, especially in our age. Remember, Jesus even says things like, um, to Thomas, blessed are those who believe without seeing as mm. well. Jesus encourages us to look to those things that, that are unseen. And many other passages from Scripture do this as well. And so while we can drill down into the um, angels and what they do in, in a minute in particular, I think... Um, one broader case for celebrating this is because it corrects a problem of our modern life, mm -hmm. especially in the West, which ignores the invisible, even though we confess every week that God mm -hmm. created it. I completely agree. And um, 
my experience on, you know, in my current parish, we do have the custom of, of celebrating St. Michael and all the angels. And it's been a real joy to be a part of that and, and preach on this occasion a number of years now. And I find that um, this is, it's almost a relief for people in a sense that when, you, when you're talking about angels and these themes of the unseen, the people of God generally do have a deeper piety in, in reference to these things, but they don't always hear it talked about a lot. Mm. And, and it's even surprising the number of people that actually um, uh, have had themselves or, mm. or, or know people um, you know, who have had some sort of experiences they associate with, with angels, and they never know if this is an appropriate thing to talk about in the life of the church. They feel like they're going to get made fun of or something like this. Um, and almost every time this has come up in the church calendar, I've found people wanting to talk more about these sorts of experiences. But isn't that strange that we're happy to say that Jesus rose from the dead, but mm. suddenly angels is weird? Mm. Uh, or, mm. or like we're happy to believe that God became um, a human being, but, mm. but then suddenly belief in spirits uh, is strange. Like, it is, it is, and, um, absolutely. It's a strange contradiction then. Mm. And, and maybe that's the problem, that you begin not celebrating angels. Mm -hmm. Maybe you begin not celebrating other miraculous mm -hmm. things. And um, so all the more reason to... Um, uh, pop open the champagne after your church service and um, yeah. celebrate on the 29th. So why St. Michael? Well, there are only um, a few angels that are given names, mm -hmm. even though we know there are hordes of angels. Mm -hmm. um, they're often described even in, in sort of martial language, mm -hmm. hosts, armies of, mm -hmm. of angels. Jesus refers to them that way in Gethsemane as well. Mm -hmm. um, but Michael is one of the few that's that's named. Um, we also get named the Archangel Gabriel. Yep. Um, and then in the, Raphael is named also in the Apocrypha, I believe I think only. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and, um, but Michael, one of the few that's, that's named, I mean, he was the one that the Roman Basilica was named after, but also in the book of Revelation, he takes on this um, really lead role yeah. in in the defeat of Satan, so much so that people even have some theologians wonder whether Michael is Christ yeah. here in, yeah. in a way as well. And um, but Michael seems to be the the arch archangel almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah, I'd never put it that way, but yeah, you're mm. right. The, the the real the top dog, mm. Saint Michael, and then all the other angels thrown in on the same day. Right. So when we celebrate Saint Michael, we're sort of using him as a yeah, name to cover all angels, but we don't because we don't know their names, and that's something yeah. of their character that makes them very interesting too. Yeah, and so what are the key roles given to angels in the scriptures? Well, so the book of Hebrews describes them as ministering spirits. Um, interestingly, so there's um, ministering means serving. So there's service of God. I think. Um, especially connected with mm -hmm. that service of the triune God. And you can see this within Jesus' life, mm -hmm. that at, at many key points there are angels there serving him. They, they explicitly are said in, in the temptation, do you remember, in the, in the mm -hmm. wilderness, um, when Christ is tempted, there were angels who were ministering to them. They're there celebrating his birth, obviously. Um, they're there also um, at his resurrection. They're there at his ascension as well, um, serving him. There's also a way in which they serve the um, the they serve us. Mm -hmm. So so Jesus also refers to um, the the angels that who um, who like a guardian angel perhaps who, who guard us who, who mm -hmm. watch over us who who serve us and um and and that's a role that you see also in the in the Old Testament that they're often serving the people of Israel um, leading them through the wilderness. Mm -hmm. um, um, guarding even the Garden of Eden at times, uh, as, as well. Remember, um, the, the um, seraphim, I think it's there, are, are put up a kind of um, angelic creature as well. And, and at other key points as well, um, ministering first to God, but also then ministering to God's people as well. Mm, mm. And, um, and you get this strongly, of course, in the, um, in the Lutheran tradition, in our prayers and um, you know, sending God's holy angel to, to watch over watch over us. And I think actually uh, angels are an interesting example of how, you know, the Reformation works in a sense that we, um, you know, angels weren't dispensed with um, completely. It wasn't seen as this, this trapping of the church that needed to be removed. And yet there is some slight um, sort of reforms. You know, we don't pray to the angels. We don't in invoke them in our tradition and, um, and, and call for their intercession. And yet they have a prominent place in both our liturgy and our prayers, don't they? 
Yeah, that's right. So even whenever we celebrate communion, we, we do it with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. So we're, we're gathered with them and they're, and they're a part of us all gathered around the throne. And you're right, though, that, that um, Christ himself never asks us to pray to the angels. Mm. But nevertheless, we should give thanks for them and, mm. um, and give thanks to Christ for them and, and participate with them in the liturgy as well and, um, and ask God, like we do in our morning and evening prayers, Send your angel. Keep sending mm. your angels to protect us and be with us, even as we don't then speak to them directly. Um, but actually, and, and they wouldn't want us to either, which is, I think, mm. one reason why they're usually nameless. Because mm -hmm. we're given the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the name that we speak um, in access. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's all that exists in the invisible mm. world as well, that um, actually the angels are there for us too. There's one, one little thing I just want to um, bring up that, that I find, just because I was mentioning before about Jesus' life. He's there at all, the angels are there at all the key moments, mm. except the crucifixion. Mm. And it's in the Garden of Gethsemane when Peter cuts off the um, ear of the high priest's servant. Mm -hmm. And Christ, in mending the ear then, also says, don't you think that I couldn't call upon legions of angels mm. now to sa save me? And um, I've always found that a poignant absence of angels mm. in the scriptures where it's as if the angels were chomping at the bit. Mm. All they wanted to do, they're ministering spirits, they're here to serve God in the flesh. Mm. All they want to do was come and save this man. Mm. And Jesus, if you like, calls them off. And, um, and so it's poignant that he goes alone, even almost without the angels who ministered to him even in the wilderness, helping mm -hmm. him there in the mm -hmm. temptation. And, and then how they burst forth at the resurrection. They're there. They, they, they wanted to be there the whole time. And Jesus sort of ca called them off. I think it's a really interesting dimension of Jesus' crucifixion um, and the presence of angels too. I didn't want to forget that bit. No, no, absolutely. And one, just one last thing. Um, I wonder what you think about about this aspect of this commemoration, this feast day in the church, is that angels are, they seem to me to be some point of contact potentially between um, Christianity and the world around us because mm. there's this persistent interest in angels outside of the Christian faith. And not just, you know, you, you go down to your local bookshop here in our city and you'll see the, you know, the religious spiritual section and there'll be maybe, you know, a Bible or two and, um, you know, a book on atheism, strangely enough. And then there'll, there'll be a number of books often on angels, mm, right? Mm, mm. Angels seem to pop up everywhere. And I've often wondered whether this is, um, you know, it's worth keeping in the life of our church, even just for this reason. Completely. And, and I think, um, well, let me maybe given arts of via a, a another story or, or a reality is that often we think we just believe in what's seen and our world is structured according to this. We read science books about this, and even philosophy books about this. And the best sellers though of the last hundred years have been The Lord of the Rings, The Bible, Harry Potter and Narnia. Mm -hmm. All of them bear witness to the unseen world mm -hmm. and, and other dimensions. And so it's this weird thing where by day we believe that just matter exists and what we, only what can be seen. And by mm -hmm. night we immerse ourselves in all these tales mm -hmm. and, of a world which points to something um, deeper and larger. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely think it's a big part of people's imagination. And sometimes, unfortunately, they can put Christianity just in the knowledge kind yeah. of thing. It's just about knowledge and what's seen. And, um, and Christians ourselves can, can, can sell ourselves short by, by doing that. But actually, by celebrating angels, it turns our faith from knowledge into adoration, mm -hmm. in, in, from, from sort of just um, factual truth to actual praise and, and glory and being in the presence of Christ. Mm -hmm. Not just having knowledge about Christ, but being with him because we're with the angels as well. So absolutely, I think it's a point of, of contact and... Um, for a world that is in, intrigued by mm. Harry Potter and, and other things like this, that, that, that wants, that feels like there's something right about this. There, there's something mm. for us, I think, there definitely to affirm and to um, uh, draw people in to what angels do ultimately, which is serve Christ, mm. Christ alone, who um, it stands at the centre of our um, love for angels. Too. Mm. Well, thank you again, Tom, for um, speaking with us about St. Michael and all angels today, September 29th. It's uh, great that you've been able to watch this video. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.